Obama attacks painful for black voters, many in state offended by criticism of Obama and remarks about Martin Luther King. Uh, Bob Herbert in the New York Times uh, columnist weighed in this way. I could also sense how hard the Clinton camp was working to undermine Senator Obama's main theme that a campaign based on hope and healing could unify rather than fuller, pol fuller polarize the country. So there was the former president chastising the press for the way it was covering the Obama campaign and saying of Mr. Obama's effort, quote, the whole thing is the biggest fairy tale I've ever seen. And there was Mrs. Clinton telling the country we don't need, quote, false hopes and taking cheap shots at, of all people, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We've already seen Clinton surrogates trying to implant the false idea that Mr. Obama might be a Muslim and perhaps a drug dealer to boot. What is this all about? Well, beats me because there's not one shred of truth in what you've just read. And I regret that because obviously a lot of people have been, uh, you know, given information or an impression that is uh, absolutely false. Uh, first, with respect to uh, Dr. King, you know, Tim, I was 14 years old when I heard Dr. King speak in person. Uh, he is one of the people that I admire most in the world. Uh, and uh, the point that uh, I was responding to uh, from uh, Senator Obama himself in a number of speeches he was making uh, is his comparison of himself to President Kennedy and Dr. King. Uh, and there is no doubt that the inspiration uh, offered by all three of them is essential. Uh, it is critical to who we are as a nation, what we uh, believe in, the dreams and uh, aspirations that we all have. But I also said that, you know, Dr. King didn't just give speeches. He marched, he organized, he protested, he was gassed, he was beaten, he was jailed. He understood that he had to move uh, the political process and bring in uh, those who were in political power. And he campaigned uh, for political leaders, uh, including uh, Lyndon Johnson, because he wanted somebody in the White House who would act on what he had devoted his life to achieving. So I think it's important to set the record straight. Um, clearly, we know from media reports that uh, the Obama campaign is deliberately distorting this. And, you know, I think we, we should just take a step out here for a minute. This is the most exciting election we've had in such a long time because you have an African-American, an extraordinary man, a person of tremendous talents and abilities running to become our president. You have a woman running to break the highest and hardest glass ceiling. I don't think either of us want to inject race or gender in this campaign. We are running as individuals. We are making our cases to the American people. Uh, and it's imperative that we get the record and the facts straight because people are entitled to have uh, that information. But I have no intention of uh, either, you know, doing something that would move this race in a wrong way or frankly, set standing by when I think tactics are being employed that are not in the best interests of our country. And let me address the, um, the point uh, that uh, Bill was making, because again, I think it's been unfairly and inaccurately characterized. Uh, what he was talking about was very directly about the story of Senator Obama's campaign being premised on a speech he gave uh, in 2002. And that was to his credit. He gave a speech opposing uh, the war in Iraq. He gave a very impassioned uh, speech against it and consistently said that he was against the war, he would vote against the funding for the war. By 2003, that speech was off his website. By 2004, he was saying that uh, he didn't really disagree with the way George Bush was conducting the war. And by 2005, 6, and 7, he was voting for $300 billion in funding for the war. The story of his campaign is really the story of that speech and his opposition to Iraq. I think it is fair to ask questions about, well, what did you do after the speech was over? And when he became a senator, he didn't go to the floor of the Senate to condemn the war in Iraq for 18 months. He didn't introduce legislation against the war in Iraq. He voted against timelines and deadlines initially. So I think it's important that we get the contrasts and the comparisons out. I think that's fair game. You know, I, I think that we don't want anyone, any of our supporters, anyone. And that's why in my campaign, anytime anybody has said anything 
that I thought was out of bounds, they're gone. You know, I have gotten rid of them. I have said that is not appropriate in this campaign. You know, when Senator Obama's chief strategist accuses me of playing a role in Benazir Bhutto's assassination, there's silence. So let's have one standard. This is an exciting and historic campaign. One of us is going to make history, which is thrilling to me. I've worked all my life on behalf of civil rights and women's rights and human rights. And so I want a good, vigorous uh, campaign about the differences uh, between us and our various qualifications and experiences to be the president that America needs. It just isn't it Senator Obama uh, who is taking offense. Uh, this is exactly what President Clinton said in Dartmouth. Here's the tape. Give me a break. This whole thing is the biggest fairy tale I've ever seen. Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina, who's neutral, mm -hmm. said this, to call that dream a fairy tale, which Bill Clinton seemed to be doing, could very well be insulting to some of us. But Tim, let me, but, let, let me but, just stop but, you right there. No, you no, did not, you, no, wait a minute. No, you did I, didn't, not, I didn't stop you. you, had you, to say, let me you just no, but you did not give the entire quote. No, you, and so no, no, the no, entire you, quote was clearly about the position on Iraq. It was not about the entire candidacy. It was not about the Congress, extraordinary Congressman Clyburn you know, has abilities. Been covering this race. Donna Brazil, herself, a, a longtime activist in the Democratic Party, this is what she said. Here's Donna Brazil. As an African American, I find his words and the, his tone to be very depressing. So these are people who are not supporters of Obama who are listening. Now, let me just go to the Martin Luther King thing, because you, you had your opportunity to, to talk about this at the beginning of the show, and I just want to lay this out for our viewers. This is how the New York Times categorized it. In an interview with Fox News on Monday, Mrs. Clinton tried to make a point about presidential leadership. Dr. King's, King's dream began to be realized when President Johnson passed the Civil Rights Act of 64. Mrs. Clinton said in trying to make the case that her experience should mean more to voters than the uplifting words of Mr. Obama. It took a president to get it done. Again, Congressman Clyburn. We have to be very, very careful about how we speak about that era in American politics. That bothered me a great deal. A writer in the Washington Post today, a black woman, said, it's as if you are minimizing I have a dream, that you are saying it's a nice sentiment, but it took a white president to get blacks to the mountaintop. Well, you know, I, I, are, I, I, look, I understand the uh, taking out of context and the mischaracterization. I have spoken with... Uh, Congressman Clyburn. I have spoken with a number of uh, uh, my very strong uh, and adamant uh, supporters. But Tim, I can't let you get away with that mischaracterization and those snippets. I was responding to um, a speech that Senator Obama gave in New Hampshire where he did compare himself to President Kennedy and to Dr. King. You know, President Kennedy served in the Congress for 14 years. He was a war hero. He'd been engaged in many of the battles uh, that led to his election uh, in the 1960 election. Dr. King had been on the front lines. He had been leading a movement. But Dr. King understood, which is why he made it very clear that there had to be a coming to terms of our country politically in order to make the changes that would last for generations beyond the iconic, extraordinary speeches that he gave. That's why he campaigned for Lyndon Johnson in 1964. That's why he was there when those great pieces of legislation were passed. Does he deserve the lion's share of the credit for moving our country and moving our political process? Yes, he does. But he also had partners who were in the political system. And I think it is such an unfair and unwarranted...